When you think of Australia, you probably think of arid hot climates in the red centre. And when you think of penguins, you probably think of frigid cold Antarctica. But in today's video, we're going to talk about these guys here, Australia's very own penguin. Stick around. So fact number one is that these are the only species of penguin native to Australia. Out of the 18 or so penguin species on the planet, this is the only one that we get here in Australia. And these guys are found from Victoria, New South Wales, South Australia, bottom of Western Australia, and down in Tasmania. They've also got a population over on the east side of New Zealand. But yeah, Australia's only native penguin. Fact number two is that there is actually two species of little penguins now. And this is a relatively recent change. In 2016, uh, the little penguins from Australia and New Zealand were basically split into two different species. So in New Zealand, they're still called little penguins, they're often little blue penguins, uh, or known by their Maori name. Whereas in Australia, they're often known as little penguins, Australian little penguins, or their old name, fairy penguins. Now, while we do call them Australian and New Zealand little penguins, the Australian penguin actually also lives on a small patch in the east coast of New Zealand. But strangely, it had only popped up there in the last several hundred years. What's believed is the case is from human impacts, the uh, penguins in that part of New Zealand died out, and some Australian ones managed to colonise it, and we've now got a little patch of Australian little penguins over in New Zealand too. Now, while most of the differences between this Australian and New Zealand species of penguin are genetic, they're not things you can see, there is actually a few behavioural differences. What we've noticed is the Australian line of little penguins, when they come to shore, basically wait in the shallows for their mates to come and waddle up the shore as a group, which is how we've got things like the penguin parade over in Phillip Island. And the New Zealand species doesn't seem so fussed about this. They're happy to waddle up the beach by themselves. And the theory for this is, is that on mainland Australia and Tasmania, these guys are exposed to predators on the beach that they don't really encounter in New Zealand. We have things like Tasmanian devils and dingoes and quolls who would be waiting at the beach to pick off a waddling penguin, which didn't really become an issue in New Zealand. So yeah, they behave a little bit differently too. Fact number three, these guys aren't just little penguins, they are the littlest penguins. They are officially the smallest penguins in the world. These guys get to a whopping one, one foot, about 30 centimetres in height uh, and one and a half kilos or three pounds. Now when you compare this to the emperor penguin, the biggest penguin who gets uh, a metre tall and up to 40 kilos, you can see why the name little penguins applies. These are the world's smallest species out of the 18 penguins. Fact number four, the little penguin is the only species of penguin on the planet capable of having multiple clutches of eggs in a year. Now it's helped by these guys having a fairly short gestation and fairly short sort of maternal care period. These guys lay two to three eggs occasionally in a burrow underground. They sit on them for 38 days or so, look after their babies for eight weeks before they become independent and it means that these guys can lay a second and potentially even third clutch of eggs in a season, which no other penguin in the world does. Fact number five is that at eight weeks old, these guys are essentially abandoned. For the first eight weeks of their life, both mum and dad share the parenting duties, going out, catching fish during the day and returning every night to uh, feed their babies. At eight weeks old, they simply stop coming back. So at eight weeks, the baby has to move out of the burrow go down to the beach and learn how to swim and how to fish entirely by itself. Now it does spend the next 12 months traveling much further than it will for the rest of its life, learning how to find its food, learning its way around the world before coming back to its sort of home colony and living out of the rest of its life closer to shore. But yeah, these guys have a very cushy first eight weeks and then they get thrown in the deep end when they reach maturity. Fact number six is that penguins go through an annual molt sometime between February and April. This little guy here is going through it now. And basically for a period of 17 days, these guys lose their feathers and it takes a period of time before their new feathers come through and become waterproof. So they basically become kind of land bound. Now it means that these guys lose a lot of weight because out in the wild, when they're not molting, these guys can eat 25% of their body weight every day. In this 17 day molt, these guys can lose half of their body weight. So uh, like this little tub back here, when they're coming up to a molt, they have to eat as much as they can to get through these 17 days because for just over two weeks these guys are stuck on dry land. Fact number seven is that these guys have been recorded diving up to depths of 72 meters which is 230 feet. They can hold their breath for up to 90 seconds. Now that's a long way down. It's not what they usually do though. The vast majority, about 50% of their dives are only to about two meters and they generally don't go much deeper than 20 meters. And what these guys are diving for is they're looking for things like small fish, it's about 10 centimeters in length, four inches, a small squid, Things like krill, occasionally small crustaceans, crabs, uh, little eels, jellyfish, things like this. But yeah, fish and squid are the vast majority of these guys' diet, caught kind of at the water's surface. Fact number eight is that penguins actually have three eyelids. So they've got a top and a bottom one, just like us. 
But just like crocodiles, they've got a see-through one which goes sideways, which we call a nictitating membrane. Now this is essentially goggles. Basically, when they're underwater, they're able to hold this nictitating membrane across their eyes, see in the water without getting salty water in their eyes, and see what they're catching, because these guys are visual predators. They have to see a fish, swim it down, and catch it. And to do so, penguins have three eyelids. Fact number nine is that little penguins, like a lot of penguins around the world, were heavily exploited by people. In the 18 and 1900s, these guys were, were shot for food, for the value of their skins and even for sport. More recently, after these guys became protected, in the 1930s, people actually pushed to have an open season for them because uh, they were considered to compete with mutton birds who were hunted commercially for burrows and food. So mutton birders actually wanted to have an open season to reduce penguin numbers to increase the number of mutton birds. Even more recently, again in the 1980s, there was cases of 200 penguins basically being shot and illegally used as bait in crayfish traps. So yeah, these guys have had a pretty hard time thanks to us human beings. And lastly, number 10, is that today, there is at least one colony of little penguins being protected by dogs. That's right, dogs, a sheepdog in fact. You see, while they still have a bunch of threats due to humans, things like oil spills, climate change, overfishing, things like this, one of their biggest threats in some colonies is introduced predators like foxes. And on Middle Island, down in Warrnambool, where I'm from, we had a problem where basically foxes had completely eradicated or almost completely eradicated our local colony of little penguins. In 2006, a local chicken farmer suggested using sheepdogs, maremmas, who are bred in Italy to protect sheep from wolves to protect the penguins. Now, between the years of 2006 and 2017, they basically put these maremma dogs on the island during the nesting season to protect the penguins and they didn't lose a single penguin to fox attack. Unfortunately, in 2017, the breeding season started a little bit early and uh, the dogs weren't present and we lost a few penguins to foxes. So today, the dogs are kept on the island basically year round, whenever it's safe to get out to the island and there hasn't been any fox attacks since the dogs have been on the island full time. So there you have it guys, that's 10 facts that I think you didn't know about Australia's little penguin. Let me know in the comments what you knew, what facts were, were new to you, maybe what you think I should have included. And um, as always, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. I do want to say that these guys are actually kept at Featherdale Wildlife Park and you can actually come and visit and get in with them, which we are about to do. So if you do come out here, make sure you come on, check out Featherdale Wildlife Park, maybe do the penguin encounter. But between now and then, make sure you subscribe, like, follow. I will see you next week. Between now and then, have a good one and take care.